Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on using a virtual machine. This particular module is a little bit different than the others that we've done because there is no particular CompTIA a exam requirement for using a virtual machine. Nothing in this video is going to really be on any of your a exams. However, using a virtual machine and taking advantage of the virtual machine technology is really going to be important for you. It is already it's an amazing technology that we we now have with this virtualization. On our single desktop, we can have many different operating systems running at the same time and even all of them interoperating with each other. The, the technology is remarkable, but what it's really going to do for you is allow you to run multiple operating systems and be able to very easily move between them and look at the differences between them. It's very, very common, even on some very decent sized hardware and software, to be able to have Windows 2000, Windows XP, Windows Vista, and even your host operating system all running simultaneously. So as you go through your operating system studies and you're trying to find out the differences between these OSs and how how does one program run differently than another program in these operating systems? This is really, really going to be useful for you. So I thought it would be useful to create a video just to show that aspect of it. Even if none of this is on the exam, being able to use a virtual machine and get up and running very quickly on a virtual machine I think will be extremely useful for your studies in the long run. First, let's talk about virtual machines and what they are. If you've never run a VM before, or in this case, a system virtual machine, what we're really doing is on your computer, we are emulating other computer systems. We have entire machines essentially running on your desktop. Instead of you creating and purchasing uh, three or four different machines that you would put on your desk and spread out with three or four different monitors and keyboards, we can have all of those machines really virtualized into a piece of software running on your desktop. And you would have three or four windows on your screen running those different operating systems. Quite remarkable to have that done. We call these operating systems guest operating systems. The one that you're running when you boot up your computer is the host operating system. And so you'll hear us use those terms back and forth as we go through using these technologies. You can install, upgrade, modify, do anything to this virtual machine, and it doesn't change anything with the way that your host operating system is running. So you can make changes to the operating system. You can change the way partitions are configured. You can mult change the way the BIOS is set up. You can delete an operating system. You can upgrade an operating system. And it doesn't affect at all the way your normal computer runs during the day, during the night, anything else happening on your computer. It's all self-contained in this virtual little world that you've created just for that OS. So already you're starting to see there's a lot of value here in running a virtual machine, especially in an environment like this with CompTIA a studies, where you would like to create a new partition and delete a partition and run a program and format a drive. You can do all that without worrying that you're going to affect anything else that's on your computer. Here's what this looks like. This is a screenshot from my computer where I have my Sun VirtualBox, which is the software we're going to use to run the operating systems. And right behind this, this is a Windows 7 desktop, but right behind it is CentOS. So I'm running Linux on Windows 7. And this Linux machine is completely self-contained in its own little world. It has its own IP address running its own programs. It works exactly like you would expect a Linux machine to work. It's not even like a Linux machine. It is a Linux machine. It just happens to be all encapsulated within software running on my desktop. We're going to do a lot of this in all of these videos that we do dealing with operating systems, where I will install Windows XP and Windows Vista and Windows 2000. But I'm doing it all in a virtual machine window like this. Here's what you'll need to get your own virtual systems running on your computer. First, you're going to need the software. Now, fortunately, virtual machine software in many cases is absolutely free. There are other types of virtual machine software that are designed for large enterprises that you can put on these monster machines with a lot of memory and a lot of disk space. 
But generally speaking, for personal use, you can find a lot of absolutely free options available out there. And I've listed a couple of here that I like really uh, a lot. There's Microsoft Virtual PC, which I really like for running Windows operating systems. It does not work very well with Linux-based operating systems. It's a product from Microsoft. It's really designed to run Windows. But it runs Windows very, very fast in a virtual environment. If you go out to Microsoft or for to Google and you search for Microsoft Virtual PC, it will take you to this URL. There's also another one, and we're going to be using this one primarily in everything that we're doing, is VirtualBox. This is a product from Sun. Uh, VirtualBox I use because I can not only run Windows operating systems in it, I can run a lot of other operating systems in it as well. So it's a lot more flexible. It is open source software. It's absolutely free. And VirtualBox can be found at virtualbox.org. Now, now that you've got the operating system software, the virtual machine software you'll need, you will need operating system software. The virtual machine software essentially is giving you a computer to work with. But obviously, if you have a computer, you need software, the operating system, to install on it. So you're going to need your Windows 2000 setup CDs. You're going to need Windows XP setup CDs or DVDs. You will need Windows Vista setup DVDs, the original media, along with all of the things that come with that operating system. You're going to need the license keys. You're going to need fully licensed versions of these operating systems to be able to load onto these virtual machines. So that's a pretty important part of this. If anything, that's where you'll need to at least have these operating systems available to you or purchase them. And in the case of Windows 2000, it becomes a little bit more difficult to even get your hands on those. Now, fortunately, Windows 2000 doesn't have a huge emphasis on the exam. So if you don't want to install that particular operating system or upgrade that particular operating system, I, of course, will have videos that you can watch to, to see exactly the process you go through. It's not incredibly required that you know in very, very detailed form exactly the way Windows 2000 works. That isn't referenced a lot. But you still need to know where certain files are, how the operating system installs, and the things you should look for. You may be able to get all of that out of our videos. But if you can get your hands on Windows 2000, maybe there's one that you can buy used or from eBay or something of that sort that might be useful as well. Now lastly, and, and probably most importantly for a virtual machine software, you're going to need a lot of memory and plenty of disk space available. You are essentially already running an operating system on your machine. Now run another one. And if you want to run two at one time, run another one. You're going to need memory to run all of those. So imagine not just the memory you need for your computer, but now multiply that times two or three. And disk space, you need a 20 gig of disk space minimum to install Windows Vista. Do you have 20 gig of disk space available on your machine in which to do that? So you may need to clear space out. You may need to get another drive. Just do the math. Figure out how much more you're going to need to get all of these things running. And make sure you have all of that RAM available and all of that disk space available in order to run these virtual machines. <laughs>